5 BL series that I currently watch. Finding a good BL nowadays to watch is kinda a tough job now since there are only a handful of them that will certainly entertain you. Luckily, the month of May still has some unique and interesting BL dramas that could be worth to watch. In this video, I will be sharing my current watch list of BL series and my thoughts about them. Just to add a thrill, I would also include my current ratings on them based on what I have seen. If you also have your own watch list of BL series, feel free to share it on the comment section below. Before that, you might want to sign up to ExpressVPN to browse and watch your favorite BL series and streaming platforms that are geo-blocked in your country. Our official link is on the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. First on my watch list, my stand-in. Watching the latest episode last Friday, I'm already hoping that Jo and Ming would not be the end game in this BL. The amount of toxicity is beyond what I have ever imagined but I'm still curious on what's going to happen next. It's one of my current favorite BL dramas not because of the love story but purely because of how engaging it is. It's been a while since I felt a connection with the characters so I guess my stand-in is doing the great way to present its plot. The only issue in the near future would be the redemption of Ming's character since from what we have seen in episode 4, it's quite hard to make his character lovable again for the viewers. On the other hand, just seeing Tong on screen already makes my blood boil because of how evil he is. His manipulative character is something I would never fall in love but Ming's obsession in him is definitely setting the plot even more spicier for the lead characters. Aside from all of these, we are also dealing with a body swap plot that's also making it even more interesting as an overall story. The reason why it happened and whether Joe's original body is still alive add another discussion to the story that must be answered in the following episodes. After all of the flashbacks for the past 4 episodes, I'm kinda excited on what to expect and how Joe and Ming would reconnect with each other but this with Joe having a different body. It's also interesting to think whether Joe would take revenge against those who had done bad to him when he was still a stand-in. As for now, I'm not looking forward for the love story and the romance between Ming and Joe but how the series will unfold its plot twist. Based on all 4 episodes, my current ratings for this BL is 8.8. .8. Number 2 on my watch list, Wandy Good Day. It's a good thing that this BL series comes a day after my stand-in because it definitely balances out the extreme serious tone of the other show. With a rom-com genre, sometimes the viewers tend not to care about the technical aspects of the show as long as it remains entertaining based on their first impressions. The difference between my stand-in and Wandy Good Day is that, the former is more of a plot-driven BL while Wandy Good Day is more of a chemistry-driven show. It's not the best series I have ever watched this year but I can't deny the fact that the chemistry of Great and In make me want to see the series until the ending. We have already seen a plot of fake boyfriends turning into real before and most likely, we already know what would happen in the next episodes based on our assumptions. But what really makes us excited for this is the execution of how they would do it including how Yuyak and Wandi would fall for each other. In addition to that, the visuals on this series is also refreshing because of a new on-screen couple. For now, Wandi Good Day is a good choice for a Saturday BL show and it's worth it. With 3 episodes up, I would rate us with a solid 8.3. Number 3 on my watch list, at 25 in Akasaka, there are two ongoing Japanese BL series right now but I'm only watching this one because it really catches my attention. The first episode was actually okay but the second one was more of a snooze fest. That's probably because the series hasn't taken off yet in terms of the plot but it gets better after the second episode. The third episode established Yuki's feelings and that echoes until the fourth episode. I actually liked the addition of Kazuma because of his different dynamics among the characters and his addition makes the story even spicier. I don't know if he's going to be until the finale but I'm hoping that his character won't end in the fifth episode. Talking about the chemistry of the main leads, it's not that evident in the earlier episodes but it gradually shows as it moves forward. 
With 5 more episodes left, I'm thinking that we will be getting some sort of drama in its climax and I just hope that it would be executed very well. For now, I would rate this JBL with an 8.0. Number 4 on my watch list, Blossom Campus. I have only seen the first two episodes of this Korean BL but all of its episodes are already available online. My first impression on this one, the acting was on the borderline of being bad and okayish. There were moments where some scenes were cringy most especially when one of the actors laugh in a forceful way. That was evident in the early scenes but it gets a little bit better in the later half of the episode. For the second one, it wasn't drastically better but I can say that I enjoyed it more than the first episode. The main couple really has a chemistry but sometimes I can't take them seriously enough when they act in a childish manner considering they are already in college. I'm not sure if it gets better as the series progresses but I would continue watching it just for the sake of completing it. For now, I would rate it a considerable 7.5 given the circumstance that I mentioned. Number 5 on my watch list, Only Boo. My monthly watch list of BL dramas won't be completed if it lacks a school BL series that's why I include this drama. Don't get me wrong on this but even though school BL series are kinda repetitive when it comes to its plot and their execution, these dramas are sometimes easier to watch than most complex stories. With Only Boo, I find both main characters easier to connect with because they don't have over the top personalities. Mumai shows exaggerated actions in persuading Kang but I think it wasn't overdone and can still be enjoyed to watch. I also want to note that the chemistry of both couples in the series is really radiating whenever they share a scene together that's probably why I love this drama. On the other hand, watching Only Boo is also a sacrifice for me since I had to pick it over we other series. Since both shows are set in school, watching both might cause me to get bored on those too easily. I might still pick up We Are sometime in the near future if I'd crave to watch more school BL dramas for pastime. I have only seen 5 episodes of Only Boo out of 7 but I would rate it an 8.3. My current ratings might still change depending on whether these series will improve or not. Don't forget to share your own watchlist of BL dramas in the comment section and also your reviews and opinions about them. Thank you for watching. That's it and see you on the next one.